workers. So I, I don't agree that we're going to lose social workers. I think they're the highest folks that are in demand right now. And given the efforts that this board has been taking, I believe that's the direction that we're going to continue to go in. But again, Madam Chair, I, I uh, would just say that um, let the voters decide. I don't think it's, it's a bad thing to have them uh, partake in something that's so grand, that's so big, to reimagine Los Angeles County. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I see that no one else wants to speak on this item. Uh, it is before us. Can, so, can I just, Madam Chair, Supervisor Hahn, um, I just wanted to, uh, again, appreciate the debate that we're having here uh, on our board. I, um, I am pleased, to be honest with you, that we, we are having this much debate and uh, ultimately our, our residents will be having this debate about our charter. Uh, most of the time, our charter gets very little uh, concern or attention. Uh, I know I was on the Charter Reform Commission in Los Angeles City where we, uh, we developed a new uh, charter and put that before the voters of Los Angeles. Uh, but this is, I think this is a great public dialogue that we will be having far into the future. And the engagement that we're already getting um, yes, from our labor unions, although they're split in terms of their support of what we're, we're doing. But in terms of our cities, our elected officials, our constituents, it's really amazing to me that we are already um, getting so many people who are interested in this. And they're interested in it because um, they, are, uh, they do want to voice their opinion on how we spend uh, our tax dollars uh, on their behalf. And I would say that the what this money is going for uh, ultimately, which by the way will be phased in um, and will have a tremendous amount of engagement in how we actually allocate this 10%. Uh, but these are programs that, I don't know about the rest of you, but my cities um, have been asking for more resources for their young people. They've been asking for more resources for their small businesses. Uh, they've wanted more mental health uh, programs. Um, they have wanted more substance abuse programs. They want rental assistance, affordable housing. So my communities have actually been asking for more resources. Um, and we usually sort of say, thank you right now, you know, that's not a budget priority for us. So this is an opportunity, I think, although it is a bu budget priority, but this will um, really codify, I think, our values and our public's values. So I look forward to what I am assuming will be a very robust uh, campaign and debate, uh, ultimately. Uh, and in November, we'll see. We'll see once and for all whether um, the public uh, believes that we should uh, set aside 10 percent, uh, no less than 10 percent of our county's locally generated unrestricted revenues to address um, these in, these issues which are not going away anytime soon. So thank you. I appreciate the debate. We ha all have great respect for each other as we move forward. Madam Chair, if I may, um, as we uh, move uh, the item forward um, uh, to the people of the County of Los Angeles to evaluate and uh, to give full consideration of what we reimagining uh, the process might be. Um, that comes to uh, uh, the people on November the 3rd. Uh, we want everybody uh, to exercise uh, their right to vote. May I say, if you don't vote on Tuesday, November the 3rd, don't complain on Wednesday, November the 4th. Uh, this is an opportunity to weigh in and let your voices uh, be heard. Prior to that, the members of the Board of Supervisors will have an opportunity in the supplemental uh, budget process where we can get things started. We have several uh, uh, pieces there in terms of the arts. We have several pieces there in terms of ODR, ATI, and more. And so, Madam Chair, uh, colleagues, we have several uh, opportunities to begin uh, the process of reimagining, of right-sizing, of balancing, uh, uh, undergirding, expanding our attention 
to the safety net of uh, Los Angeles County. It can be a good thing, and it should be a good thing, and we can uh, get there. I'm fully confident of that. Madam Chair, with your uh, permission, and in violation of parliamentary procedure, I call the pre previous question on the entire matter. So moved by Supervisor Kuehl, seconded by Supervisor Ridley Thomas. Madam Executive Officer, please call the roll. Item 57 is before us. Supervisor Solis. Aye. Supervisor Solis, aye. Supervisor Ridley Thomas. Aye. Supervisor Ridley Thomas, aye. Supervisor Kuehl. Aye. Supervisor Kuehl, aye. Supervisor Hahn. Aye. Supervisor Hahn, aye. <laughs> Supervisor Barger. No. Supervisor Barger, no. Motion carries four. Four to one. Thank you. At this time, it'd be appropriate to hear from supervisors on items not on the posted agenda to be pre presented or referred to staff. Does anyone have any specials? Madam Chair, I have a, I have a read-in motion. Is that this is to yes? Yes. Okay. Um, I have a read-in motion, colleagues, uh, that needs to be voted on today. Um, and it's asking for a report back from our executive officer, our CEO, and our county council about how we can implement video conferencing for assessment appeal hearings. Right now, these hearings are not taking place due to the pandemic, but that is creating a huge backlog that just isn't fair to property owners, and it creates an impossible situation for the hearing officers and for the staff. I understand that our governor issued an executive order last week that extended the deadline to January 2021 for many of these cases to be heard. Um, the executive order was critically important and our assessor, Jeff Prang, told me that without that extension, the county would have lost millions of dollars in property tax revenue at a time that we need it more than ever. And he strongly advocated for that order. Um, and I want to thank him for convincing the governor to give us more time to get through these appeals. Um, but he really expressed concern to me that we need to get these hearings going again if that deadline extension is going to mean anything to the county. Uh, video conferencing has become an essential tool. Uh, we have to ensure the important work we do here in the county can continue. And I think we should use it to start these hearings up again. So the directive of the motion reads as follows. I therefore move that the Board of Supervisors direct the Executive Officer of the Board in consultation with County Council to report back in writing within 21 days regarding the implementation of virtual assessment appeal board hearings using video conferencing technology. And to direct the Executive Officer in consultation with the Executive, um, the, the Chief Executive Officer in consultation with the Executive Officer to report back in writing within 21 days regarding the current resources available to uh, the funding necessary to procure the technology and the implementation of filing fees to offset administrative costs. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, so that is a report back. We don't need to take a roll on that. Um, all right, then we will now move to adjournments. Madam, we need a second. We need a second. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Move by Supervisor Hahn. Second. second. By Supervisor Ridley Thomas. Just a report and file. Um, Madam Executive, I'll just call the, call the uh, roll. roll. Um, this is on the report back for the assessment appeals. Supervisor Solis. Aye. Supervisor Solis. Aye. Supervisor Ridley Thomas. Aye. Supervisor Ridley Thomas. Aye. Supervisor Kuehl. Aye. Supervisor Kuehl. Aye. Supervisor Hahn. Aye. Supervisor Hunt, aye. Supervisor Barger. Aye. Supervisor Barger, aye. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Now we are going to move on to adjournments, and it's going to be three, four, five, one, and two at this time. Supervisor Kuehl. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. I move that when we adjourn today, we adjourn in memory of Mark Powell. He was an avid and visionary rock climber throughout his life and completed a number of difficult climbs. Uh, Spider Rock, Cleopatra's Needle, Totem Pole in Monument Valley, El Capitan in Yosemite. He was a beloved and respected figure in the climbing community, compiling well over 100 climbs of record. He earned his BA and his MA in geography from CSUN and started teaching at Pierce College in Woodland Hills in 1967 and formally retired in 1995. A professor of geography with a specialty in weather. 
He also served as chairman of the Earth Science Department there for many years, and he is survived by his sister, Betty. And I move that when we adjourn today, we adjourn in memory of Universal Chairman Tom Pollock, who died just a few days ago. After graduating from Stanford in 64, he attended Columbia Law School and later began his career as an entertainment lawyer. In 1970, he started his own firm with George Lucas among his first clients, and he negotiated what would turn out to be a billion dollar deal that secured Mr. Lucas the merchandising and sequel rights to Star Wars. Pollock also was instrumental in negotiating the Indiana Jones and Superman franchises. In 1986, he left his firm to serve as executive vice president of MCA and chairman of Universal Pictures, a post he held until 1996. He oversaw the release of blockbusters, including Jurassic Park, uh, Back to the Future, and all the sequels, and many more. Uh, during his tenure, Universal released more than 200 films that grossed in excess of $10 billion, with a B, worldwide, and earned seven Academy Award Best Picture nominations, including one for the 1994 winner, Schindler's List. Mr. Pollack was credited for bringing in creative talent such as Ron Howard, Brian Grazer, Martin Scorsese, Spike Lee, George Miller, Rob Cohen, Ivan Reitman, and James Cameron. He's survived by his children, Allegra, Luke, and Alexandra. And I move that when we adjourn today, we adjourn in memory of Linda Huff, author and activist who died on July 7th. She earned her PhD in English and American Lit from the University of Maryland. In the 1970s, in Washington, D.C., Dr. Huff served as a director of Amnesty International. She studied with poet laureate Reed Whitmore and wrote a dissertation version of the book that became a portrait of an artist as a young woman, colon, the writer as heroine in American literature. In 1983, cited by the Los Angeles Times as insightful, well-written, and highly readable. As an author and human rights activist, she belonged to the U.S. Holocaust Museum, the Simon Wiesenthal Center, the Museum of Tolerance, and the Southern Poverty Law Center. She's survived by her brother Bill, her sister Judith, and her partner Ross. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Supervisor Hahn. Supervisor Hahn. Coming. Uh, colleagues, I wanted to start uh, with an adjournment for Gabriella Elena O'Donnell, uh, who is the mother of the mayor of uh, Long Beach, Robert Garcia. She passed away. She was only 61, and unfortunately, she passed away from complications due to COVID-19. Uh, she was born in Lima, Peru, and it was there that she gave birth to her first son, Robert Garcia the future mayor of Long Beach. Gabby and her five-year-old son, Robert, flew to the United States in search of the American dream. She wanted a better life for her family. She and her son could not speak English when they settled in the San Gabriel Valley. And Gabby worked as a maid, a clerk, and other jobs until she landed a position as an assistant in a clinic. That job began her lifelong career in healthcare. In 1991, she was hired to work in an oncology clinic where she stayed for almost 30 years. In 1993, Gabby married Gregory O'Donnell and later gave birth to her second son, Jacob O'Donnell. And while Gabby was never able to attend college, she always said that her greatest accomplishment was seeing both of her sons graduate from Cal State Long Beach. Both entered public service. Robert uh, is in his second term as Long Beach mayor and Jacob is a field deputy for State Senator Lena Gonzalez. A scholarship has been created to honor Gabby's memory, which will fi financially assist students in health care, particularly women. And yeah, women. we should contribute to that. Can somebody not muted? Can everybody mute? Because I'm hearing. Supervisor Ridley Thomas, can you mute, please? Thank you. Um, Gabby's husband, Greg, remains in the hospital on a ventilator where the family is praying every day that he recovers. Gabby also leaves her eldest son, uh, Robert and his husband Matt, her son Jacob and his son Caden, as well as many extended family and friends who loved her very much. May I join in that? Uh, All members, huh? 
All yeah, members, so. thank you. I think that would be great. I, th I think the mayor would really appreciate that. Uh, the next one I wanted to do uh, was for Robert Sturgis, uh, who passed away at the age of 80. He was a longtime resident of Manhattan Beach. He grew up in Los Angeles and graduated from UCLA with a degree in engineering. Bob had a lengthy and prominent career in aerospace and retired from Raytheon. He was married for 56 years to Joanne Sturgis, you might remember, a former executive officer for LA County Board of Supervisors. He's survived by his wife, Joanne, his two daughters, Jody and Dana, and his two granddaughters, Megan and Allie. I also move that when we adjourn, we adjourn in the memory of Robert Thome, who passed away at the age of 66. Uh, when Robert was 15, he suffered a serious injury while playing football, leaving him paralyzed from the neck down. Never a quitter, Robert became an accomplished, world-renowned mouth stick painting artist. He was active in the internationally acclaimed Mouth and Foot Painting Artist Association and inspired people all around the world with his paintings. Robert was also one of the founding members of Rancho Los Amigos Foundation's Art of Rancho exhibition and remained an active member of the rancho's community for years. He's survived by his wife, Kathy, and their two children, Mark and Melissa, and two grandchildren, Ashley and Dylan. I also move that when we adjourn today, we adjourn in the memory of Florentino Martinez, who was a longtime resident of Wilmington, uh, was 95 when he passed away. He served in the United States Army during World War II and was awarded the Bronze Star Medal. He later served in the U.S. Navy during the Korean War. He was a member of the Sunshine Club, Senior VFW Club, and Latino Club at Banning Park. Florentino was also an active member of the VFW Post in Wilmington and proudly served as part of the Honor Guard, the best little post in the West Coast. Florentino is survived by his wife, Maria, five children, 21 grandchildren and eight grand great grandchildren. I also move that when we adjourn today, we adjourn in the memory of Jose Perez, who was a LA firefighter paramedic who passed away at the age of 44. He grew up in Lakewood. He later moved to Cerritos where he and his wife raised their three kids. Um, Perez began his career with the Los Angeles Fire Department on December 8th, 2003. And during his 16 year career, he was assigned to fire stations 39, 52, 65, 33s, and at fire station 21 for the last four years. He's survived by his wife, Heidi, three children, Adrian, Kaylee, and JC, and Mother Maria. And I also move that when we adjourn today, we adjourn in the memory of Karen Cole Cermak, who passed away at the age of 36. She lived a life packed with adventure. She was a proud graduate of Loyola Marymount University and a member of the Delta Zeta sorority. Karen is preceded in death by her father, Michael. She is survived by her mother, Rini, her husband, Curtis, her brothers, David, Mike, and Jeff, and countless friends. Those are all of mine, Madam Chair. I'm not hearing anything. Is anybody there? I'm sorry. I move that when we adjourn, we adjourn in memory of Warner Henry. Warner Henry was a founder of the Henry Wine Group, and he and his wife, Carol, were actually uh, the people behind beginning of L.A. Opera, and his support for many of the different musical uh, groups over at the Music Center are well known. He passed away over the weekend. Um, he was an amazing man. He was a dear friend of my father's and someone who I really um, cherished growing up. He graduated from Stanford, and I love the one story that he says. He says, as a young man, he had a serious, uh, he was a serious jazz fan. While at Stanford, he often went to San Francisco to enjoy lively music. He listened to Turk Murphy and Bob Scobie, and he recalls with a smile there were a couple of new guys getting started, one named Deb, Dave Brubick and another named George Shering. I started hitting the bars where they were playing. A professor said, if you're interested in them, you should take music one, so he did. When I heard Bach, it was all over. 
He was the original boogier. Warner continued, for him, listening to classical music is a spiritual experience. It reaches a part of you that isn't reached in any other way. He truly will be missed. His wife, Carol, is an amazing woman, and I send my heartfelt prayers to her and her three children. I also move that we adjourn in memory of Constine Deli, a longtime resident of the 5th District who passed away at the age of 39. Tim, as he was affectionately known, loved his dog, Rocky, and was passionate about traveling. He had a tradition of taking a trip for his birthday and on other special occasions. He was an avid Lakers and Dodger fan, attending many games. He also enjoyed pups at the park night with his dog, Rocky. His other passions were cars. He fully restored his Volkswagen Carmen Ghia, which is scheduled to be featured in the car magazine. Tim is remembered for being compassionate and his willingness to help others. He's survived by his girlfriend, Lori, mother, Sandy, who is a member of the county family, and brother, Nick. Also, that we adjourn in memory of Donald Lee Fitzwater, a longtime resident of Santa Clarita, who was born in Ohio and was a proud descendant of the American Revolutionary War patriot, Thomas Fitzwater of Pennsylvania. He became a journeyman painter as a young man and a master craftsman in many trades. After moving to California, he worked as a maintenance supervisor in for San Fernando Electric Company and as a facility supervisor at AVX Filters Corporation. His greatest passion was flying and all things aviation. He was a member of a flying club and loved flying small personal aircraft. He also received his California high school certificate in proficiency in 1991. Don is survived by his six children. Also, Officer Valentin Martinez, a resident of Santa Clarita and a 13-year veteran of the Los Angeles Police Department who passed away July 24th at the age of 45 after a battle with COVID-19. He is the second LAPD employee and first sworn officer to succumb to COVID-19. Val, as he was affectionately known, was born in Mexico and joined the LAPD in 2007. He was last assigned to the Mission Community Police Station as a patrol officer. Val is survived by his partner, Megan, who is expecting twin boys. He's also survived by his parents, Maria and Ricardo, and siblings, Diana, Ricardo Jr., Navarro, and Juan. Also that we adjourn in memory of John Medici, Medicis, a resident of the Antelope Valley. His greatest passion and purpose in life was to share the gospel, which he did through his book ministry, giving away hundreds of books. He fought cancer for the last several years. John is survived by his siblings, Sharon, Janice, Susan, Joe, Jared, and Mary, and many nieces and nephews. Also, jo Joellen Perkins, a longtime resident of Castaic, Joellen was the wife of Bob Lewis, president of the Castaic Area Town Council. She earned her BA in psychology at San Francisco State University and a master's of social work at Sacramento State University. She started the victim services program in the district attorney's office in Yolo County and provided comprehensive services to victims of violent crime. She moved to Southern California and in 1983, she began working for the LA County Department of Mental Health where she worked for over 30 years. She ultimately became the district chief for mental health services in the Antelope Valley. She was the chair of the board of Equine Assisted Growth and Learning Association, working with horses and clients for equine ass assisted uh, psychotherapy and personnel development, personal development. She was a lover of animals and enjoyed taking care of her horses and cats. She adopted various lions at the Roar Foundation, Shambhala Preserve, and a sanctuary for big cats. Joellen is survived by her husband, Bob, son Jordan and brother Craig. And also I move that we adjourn in memory of Dr. Barry Peru, a longtime resident of the San Gabriel Valley, a retired LA County Sheriff's Sergeant recently when he passed away on July 21st. Barry graduated from Temple City High School and later joined the Sheriff's Department on August 7th, 1969. While serving in the Sheriff's Department, he pursued his doctorate in psychology which he coupled with his experience as a deputy to advocate and spearhead the creation of the MET and SMART teams. This was his vision with Linda Boyd. He served 32 years as a law enforcement officer during which he oversaw the MET and crisis negotiation teams. Barry helped train hundreds of law enforcement officers and deputies around the country on suicide by cop and how to effectively handle encounters with persons with mental illness. Barry also served as a commissioner for 22 years on the LA County Mental Health Commission. 
Barry was someone who will leave a lasting impact throughout the county because you always went above and beyond, especially for those in need, those suffering from mental illness. His advocacy and leadership was instrumental in promoting the needs for those who are unable to advocate for themselves and promote awareness for mental health issues. Barry is survived by his wife, Lori. And last, I move that the Board of Supervisors adjourn in memory of the eight crew workers of Crew 44 who tragically passed away nearly 52 years ago on August 23, 1968, fighting the Canyon Fire. Fireman Specialist George Thomas, LA County Fire, Crewman Gregory Banks, LA County Probation, Crewman Dwayne Battle, LA County Probation, Crewman Larry Carlin, LA County Probation, Crewman Arthur Mendel, LA County Probation, Crewman Robert Rivera, LA County Probation, Crewman Robert Rodriguez, LA County Probation, and Crewman Earl Walzer, LA County Probation. May their memory and ultimate sacrifice in defense of our county never be forgotten. And now I have two adjournments for Supervisor Solis. I move that we adjourn in memory of Cecilia Dolores Serrano. Is a, she's a mother-in-law of one of my assessment appeals board commissioners, Anthony Manessas, and the mother of his wife, Maria. She was born December 11th, 1943 in El Paso, Texas to Perfecto and Angela Madrid. At an early age, her family relocated to California where she became a longtime Los Angeles County resident for nearly 70 years. She graduated from Sacred Heart High School in 1963 and was married shortly after graduation on June 22nd, 1963 to Jose Serrano. Together, Jose and Cecilia purchased their first and only home in La Puente where they lived for nearly 40 years. She was a homemaker while she raised a beautiful family of six with three boys and three girls. She then became a teacher's aide and then a supervisor in the printing industry for 20 years. Because of her six children, Cecilia and Jose were blessed with 18 grandchildren and 17 great-grandchildren. She passed away on July 26, 2020 due to complications from COVID-19. May she rest in peace. Also that we adjourn in memory of Le Dung Hua, a former Taiwanese president who passed away at the age of 97 on July 30th, 2020. He was wide, widely considered as a father of Taiwan, Taiwan's democracy, having ushered in a wave of pluralism into the Taiwanese government. He was credited with ending autocratic rule in Taiwan. During his time in office, he led constitutional changes and instituted direct presidential elections. He served as the president of the Taiwan from 1988 to 2000. May he rest in peace. Those are Supervisor Solis's adjournments. Now we will go on to Supervisor Willie Thomas. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. I'm going to ask Supervisor Han to make sure that her, her, her phone is uh, uh, muted so that I won't be distracted in my reading. Uh, I, I move to uh, adjourn in memory of Otis Ray John Williams, uh, who was tragically killed on July the 3rd, 2020, at the age of 14. Uh, this was in the unincorporated community of the Florence Firestone area. Uh, he graduated from Drew Middle School and would have high, entered high school in, in the fall. He enjoyed playing basketball and video games with his friends. He will be remembered as a respectful young man a beloved son and uh, brother, as well as a good friend. He survived by his father, Otis, his mother, Francine, his sisters, uh, and extend extended family and friends, all of whom will miss Otis most dearly. A timely, tragic, and violent uh, uh, death that saddens us all at the age of 14. He's a victim of violent crime, and this board cares about such individuals. Madam Chair, uh, I move that when we adjourn today, we adjourn in memory of Herbert Herb Anthony Prelo II, and he was born on March the 14th, 1942 in Los Angeles and passed on July the 26th in Apple Valley at the age of 78. He grew up in Los Angeles and was a proud graduate of Carver Junior High School and Thomas Jefferson High Schools. 
uh, and he excelled at track and field. Mr. Prelu served in the U.S. Army and received an honorable discharge at the end of his uh, service. He attended Trade Technical College where he earned his plumbing degree. He was a longtime public servant working for both the city and county of Los Angeles, and he served as a licensed journeyman plumber for over 40 years. He retired from the county's internal services department after some 28 years and relocated to uh, Apple Valley, and that was in 1999. He was a passionate person and particularly about vintage shopping and turned this passion into uh, pieces of the past, a collectibles and antiques store he owned and operated with his wife, Deanna. Uh, Mr. Prelude was an active member and donor for several organizations, including SEIU Local 721, the NAACP, the National Council of Negro Women, Shriners Hospitals for Children, and St. Jude's Hospital, um, St. Jude's Research Hospital. Uh, all here in Los Angeles. He was also a faithful member of the Emanuel Temple Christian Methodist Episcopal Church and a founding member of the Pioneer Bidwist Club of the High Desert. He will be remembered as a longtime public servant, a, a jazz enthusiast, an avid card player, a sharp dresser. Uh, he will be remembered for his love for travel and hosting family and friends for uh, special events. Mr. Prelu is survived by his wife of 20 years, Deanna, three daughters, Dia, Kelly, and Onisha, um, a son, Omar, uh, an assistant deputy here in uh, my office, um, and two uh, siblings, both Edward and Mary. 14 grandchildren, extended family and friends, who will most assuredly, Madam Chair and colleagues, miss and mourn the passing of Herbert Herb Anthony Prelo II. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Supervisor. Thank you. Thank you. Those, thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Hahn, for not interrupting Supervisor Ridley Thomas. Um, with that, we have the Germans before us, moved by Supervisor Hahn, seconded by Supervisor Ridley Thomas. With that, this concludes today's meeting. The next meeting of the Board of Supervisors will be a special closed session on August 11th. Our next regular meeting of the Board of Supervisors will be held on September 1st, 2020. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Thank Chair. You. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Supervisor. This meeting is no longer being <laughs> recorded. Hey, hey, I didn't interrupt you either. Come on. <laughs>